Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar, How Your Employees Can Thrive Anywhere with a Cloud Document Management Solution. My name is Nicole Schmeide, and I'm the Marketing Specialist here at DocuWare. Today's webinar will be presented by John Keenan, Senior Sales Director at DocuWare. So on the right, you can see today's agenda. For the first few minutes, John will cover, you know, what, what could the future of the office look like? And then he'll explain, you know, how DocuWare can help you with that. Then the next 20 minutes, he'll jump into a live demo and we'll wrap it up for Q&A at the end. So we are scheduled for 30 minutes. If there are more questions, we might go a bit over, but otherwise, look out for the email tomorrow morning. And with that, now I'll pass it off to John. Thank you, Nicole, and thank you everyone for attending. We really appreciate the activity and gonna gonna jump into the new normal we find ourselves. But before we get there, I, I, I think a, a congratulations might be in order. I mean, at, at the end of the day, we've made it this far. Uh, it's been an interesting year. We were thrown into a new normal back in, in uh, March and we're working in ways that we never thought we ever would have to. Um, and, and at the end of the day, in many, many instances, we're thriving. Uh, and those that are thriving are thriving because they figured out how to work with the distributed workforce. So before we get into the demo, let me just share with you a couple of facts. We reached out um, to, to our customers and <clears throat> we asked them some of their insights when it comes to dealing with, with running a business in a COVID environment. Uh, and the results really weren't all that surprising. Almost 50% of, of cu customers or companies actually uh, shared that they felt like they weren't prepared, right? 70% um, now that they're in this new normal are really concerned about security issues from a virtual world, okay? And now close to 100%, 92 plus percent of responders now see the value of cloud, particularly when running their businesses from a distributed workforce. The second part of that question, what processes are most mission critical? And again, no great surprises. It's what exactly what you would think about. It's billing and collections, it's accounts payable, sales order processing, payroll, and so on, right? These are the things that are critical to make sure that you're running your business on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully we're gonna show you how you can do that better. But before we get there, we're gonna I'm gonna pass this back to Nicole because we'd like to ask you a specific question. All right, thanks, John. Yeah, so I have a question here, just one that I'm going to launch. And if you could just take a second uh, on your screen, just answer it. So the question is, you know, how is your workforce working now? Is, are they working mostly remotely, mostly at the office, a uh, mix, you know, a hybrid or other? So um, just wait a couple seconds till we get, um, least 75 percent voted here and then i'll we'll, i will share the results so looks like we got all right so with that i'm actually going to close the poll now share the results so you know you can see here on the screen um you know the answers look like what they were what i thought they were going to be so you know looks like ma majority are mostly working remotely um, or a mix of the two with, you know, a little bit working at the office still. So, all right, thank you for answering the question. And now I will pass it back to John. Terrific. So let's take a peek. What, what could the future look like uh, with a completely distributed workforce? Well, there's a couple of things that most people are predicting, and that's the days of everybody on our team being at the office at the same time is probably a thing of the, the past. Right. So what we need to look forward to is equipping all of our employees with the ability to provide value to our customers, regardless of what way they're interacting with the company. And that means whether it be laptop via web web client access, whether it be by mobile access. Right. We have to secure data. Right? Security is such a huge part of a, of a virtual world that we find ourselves. We have to be able to make sure that we're not only protected against cyber attacks, right, but we're meeting regulatory compliance standards based on the industries that we're in, right? Then the what ifs, right, or the, the how do I's. How do I grant access to a building while maintaining a contactless environment? 
Can DocuWare help with that? Sure we can. What about HR? This is truly a new normal for HR because now we have to vet and hire new employees to grow our businesses, in many cases, completely remotely. Now, I can tell you there are some challenges associated with that because since March, I have hired a new salesperson, okay? He is completely onboarded, completely trained, okay, and actually thriving as a new sales guy in the DocuWare environment, and we did that completely remotely because we're spoiled. We have access to the tools that we need to pull this off and pull it off efficiently, right? So at the end of the day, we want to be able to, we want to show you that you can thrive, whether or not your employees are at the office, whether they're on the road, across the country, working from a home office, quite frankly, anywhere in the world. And by the way, how are they accessing their data? Whether it be smartphone or web client, you have to be able to accommodate to keep your businesses running in the direction that they need to, to thrive and grow with a remote workforce. So without any more slides, let's jump into the demo and show you some of the possibilities. You're looking at the DocuWare mobile applicate, uh, uh, mobile interface. This is kind of a picture of what your world could look like if you go completely virtual, right? You need to keep your business processes going. And the first thing is, how do I find my stuff? Or even more importantly, how do I get my stuff into DocuWare? So let's take a second and just do a, a quick tour of what we're looking at. On the right-hand side, we have a document viewer. This is where we'll work with our documents. On the left-hand side, we have trays or baskets, right? This is the inbox. This is how we prep our documents before putting them in an electronic file cabinet. And then finally, a couple of simple tabs up top. I'm on my tray tab. If I wanna find a document, I'll go to my search or my list tab. And tasks are workflow tasks. What's a workflow? Anything required to keep those mission business processes moving, particularly now that we have a distributed workforce. Right. So the first question that often comes up is, is how flexible is DocuWare in getting documents into the system? And the answer is very, very flexible. In fact, we can meet all of your needs, particularly if you're working remotely. So what do I mean by that? Well, if your remote employees have scanners, they can walk to any scanner, desktop scanner, multifunction device, and scan paper documents directly into DocuWare. Now, the way this works is doc, these uh, scanners will scale to scan to a folder that DocuWare is monitoring, right? When the document hits that folder, DocuWare simply imports them automatically. The same concept applies if you're receiving documents by email. Let's say you receive a document, uh, an email attachment, right? And you need to bring that attachment in. DocuWare can be configured to monitor any folder within, within the Outlook environment and simply automatically bring those documents in. What might that look like? Well, let me just make my interface a little bit smaller and you'll notice I have a scanner icon and I have an email icon. So let's say I wanna take this quotation and it's in paper format. I wanna bring it to a scanner, scan that document in. DocuWare is monitoring that folder and with no additional work on your part, that document is automatically brought into DocuWare. Same thing applies for email. The email is sent, uh, an email is received, DocuWare is monitoring that folder, okay? And as quickly as it hits the folder, DocuWare will then bring it into the system with no further action on your part, right? Now, the third way I wanna talk about is the ability to print, right? You can be working in any application. Let's say you're working in Word or Adobe or a ERP or line of business application. If there's a document that you're working on, you can simply print them into DocuWare. So I'll demonstrate that by simply opening a document and choosing print. And you'll notice the print configuration is a DocuWare printer, right? And the DocuWare printer actually gives the user three choices. You can store it into DocuWare like I'm doing right now. You can print it to whatever printing device you're currently using, or you can share it as an email attachment. 
but total flexibility. Now, at the end of the day, there are many more than three ways to get documents into DocuWare, but in the remote world we find ourselves, these three tend to be very, very mission critical. Okay. So now that we have documents in the system, what we like to say is if you can do it with paper, you can do it in a remote world. This is important, right? We need to mimic the processes that you're currently doing in a paper environment. So what do I do with paper? Well, sometimes I organize paper. So you'll notice I'm looking at a, a document right here and the document happens to be 13 pages long. Well, if I wanna reorder that document, I might wanna unstaple it, right? After I unstaple it and reorder it, I can simply staple it back together. Right? Same thing you would be doing with paper. What about writing, marking up a document, right? Well, if I can do it with paper, shouldn't I be able to write text on a document, right? We might need to annotate a document for collaboration reasons. I might want to highlight text to point out to one of my teammates. I want, might want to use an arrow function. I might want to highlight full paragraphs. We give you complete control over these things. What if there's sensitive information on a document? You can simply redact or redact on the fly. So again, if you can do it with paper, you can do it with DocuWare. Hopefully you're starting to see the possibilities of automation with a distributed workforce, okay? So that's importing or getting documents into the system and working with them, right? Once the document is stored, we need to easily find it. Why? Well, prior to COVID, studies indicated that we spend 30 to 50% of our time searching for stuff. Think about that for a second. 30 to 50% of our time, half of our day. If you're an employer, half of your, your payroll is going to people just, excuse me, trying to find their documents. Well, we store things in such a way to make it very simple to find, thereby reducing that 30 to 50% of our time. So if I wanna find a document, I can go to my search tab and you'll notice I have search terms against the documents. And these search terms are completely configurable for your use case. I happen to be looking in an HR file cabinet, so it would make sense that I searched on last name or first name or document type or date of birth, right? In accounting, I might be looking for vendor name, document type invoice, due date, amount, right? Sales order processing, totally differently. So two things on this. These are totally configurable, so you can search any way you need to. And more importantly, you don't have to fill in these search terms when you store a document. DocuWare will do it for you. Now that's a different conversation for a different day, but when we store a document, DocuWare will do all the heavy lifting of applying the search terms so you don't have to worry about all that laborious hand, hand king, okay? So now we know we could search very similar to the way we search in Google. If I Google pizza places, I get millions of hits. Pizza places Boston, I get 10,000. Pizza places Boston on First Avenue, I get three. Well, isn't that what we're talking about here? I could start with a last name search. So let me do a last name search on somebody in the file cabinet. And as it turns out, here are all the documents associated with this employee. By the way, real employee, fake documents, right? I'm not, I'm not betraying any, any trust here. But what if I wanna get more granular? I don't wanna just search on last name. I wanna search on last name, and I wanna see just his travel expense reports. And I can very, very quickly zoom in on exactly what I'm looking for. And that's what I did right here. So doesn't that remind you of Google, right? Same thing, right? A little different format, but the real power behind this is all of your folks already know how to search this way, right? So the learning curve and the adoption curve is really, really low or flat, which means you'll get value from DocuWare almost immediately, right? What if I can't find something? Well, the good news is DocuWare is reading every document that is sent into the repository. So because we're reading it at any time, I can do a full text search, right? So let's say it's a human resource application and somebody, I'm, I'm working in HR and somebody in my, on my team says, I need somebody with MS Office experience, right? Well, I have a storehouse of, of uh, resumes that have already been stored, 
right? So would it be nice to be able to search for that specific skill set? And that's what I'm doing now by searching in the full text area, right? So if I type in MS Office and I do a search, you'll notice it takes me to, to all the documents. There happens to only be one, but it'll take me directly to the document and highlight that word search that I'm looking for. Wow, pretty powerful, okay? We can make it even more elegant and more efficient because we can allow you to store your favorites. What you'll realize when you start using DocuWare is that you search for the same stuff over and over and over again. So wouldn't it be nice to have a favorites area so you don't have to do index searches? And that's exactly what our list area is for, right? So if I wanted to save this search, let's say I, I'm gonna keep going back to looking for everything with MS Office in it, I would simply go and save that. And then it would land in my list area. Well, I already have some favorites. Let's say I wanna see all of my open contracts. I don't have to do an index search, I simply search for it, right? I simply click on the list, here are all my 2020 resumes. And by the way, it's whatever is important for your specific workflows. So hopefully based on the fact that you can do a full text search, you can do an index search, and you can set up a favorites area, you, you're starting to see that that 30 to 50% of our time gets some extremely uh, compressed so you can really build efficiencies even with the distributed workforce, right? All right, let's spend a second and talk about security, right? Really important. Over 70% of decision makers are saying security is really, really important. Well, it's important to note that DocuWare plays in every industry, including medicine, and we meet or exceed the security certification requirements by industry, including HIPAA. Now, most people on this call would recognize that HIPAA really is the gold standard when it comes to um, security or personal security or data security, right? So to demonstrate this and how we can restrict access to DocuWare, I've just logged in as just your standard employee. His name's Peter. And let's say Peter feeling a little bit naughty and he wants to search the HR file cabinet for his boss's information. His boss's last name is Winner and you'll notice he's doing a last name search for the name Winner and he finds nothing. Why? Not because there are no documents there, but because he doesn't have rights to see those documents. What documents does he have rights to see in this file cabinet? Well, it makes sense that he would have the rights to see his own documents. And as it turns out, that's all he can see. Here are all the documents related to Peter Sanders and everything else is com completely shielded from his view. Now let's take the example a step further and let's log in as his boss, Mr. Winner, right? When Mr. Winner executes the same exact search, what you'll notice is he not only sees his own documents, they're here at the bottom, Fred Winner, but he can also see Peter Sanders' documents as well as all of the direct reports in his department. Makes sense, right? He should be limited to himself and those that report directly to him. And to just close the link or the, the tie, tie a ribbon around this idea, let's log in as the HR manager right? And when I execute that search as the HR manager, what you'll see is that, and it would make sense, that the HR manager gets access to everything. And you'll notice, well, I just searched for the resume again. If I execute that search, you'll notice he has access to virtually everything in the DocuWare environment. So what have I showed you so far? Well, an, an environment that's easy to get documents into, an, an environment that is easy to find things, okay? And most importantly, you're working in a secure environment that will meet any regulatory requirements that are thrown in your direction. So let's take a second now and pivot and talk about workflow. The idea here is we now have our paper under control right? But we need to keep those business processes moving. So remember what we view a workflow as. A workflow is simply moving what used to be a piece of paper from one person to another. 
right? So it could be an accounts payable workflow where we're routing an invoice for approval. It could be a resume that we're routing around the organization for some type of hiring decision. That's what I had to do with my guy remotely when I hired my guy in March. And in this specific workflow, what you're looking at is a provisioning checklist that needs to be uh, satisfied so I can get my new employee, Joe Candidate, all the stuff that he needs to be successful, right? It's a typical HR provisioning workflow. So in this particular case, I'm the hiring manager. My new employee's name is Joe Candidate, okay? I'm hiring him, him in the sales department, and here is his ID number. Now I need to indicate who has to help provision him, right? I'm gonna choose the HR manager, and I'm gonna choose the IT manager. You'll notice if I unpress the IT manager, the document changes. Hold on one second, excuse me. So if I un unclick IT, the document changes. It's a relational document and it'll display only what's necessary. So instead of doing HR and IT, I'm gonna simply choose HR and I can choose standard, right? I want a standard provisioning for him or standard plus other options. And you'll notice same thing, if I choose other options, it actually expands to more fields. So I'll just go with the standard option and I simply submit this. So what's happening when I submit this e-form? Well, the first thing that's happening is that form, a hard copy of that form is now in the DocuWare environment ready to be searched on, right? So I can simply search based on what I stored today and here's a hard copy of that provisioning checklist. Makes sense, really easy to find. Remember that 30 to 50% of our time, I just really cut down on it. But more importantly, the HR manager got a notification that they have a task to perform regarding that provisioning, right? And that is to confirm that we've done everything necessary to provide him with what he needs to be successful, right? So I get him whatever is required from an HR standpoint. I get him his, his employee uh, handbook and his business cards or whatever. And when I'm done, I simply in indicate that the setup is complete and the workflow or that document is now stamped and sent back to the originator. And the originator simply needs to ensure or check with the employee to ensure that everything has been done. So if I open the task, you'll see that the document is now stamped and now I need to indicate whether or not that task has in fact been completed and I'll simply say yes, right? So what did I do? Well, by using a DocuWare e-form, I actually stored a, a provisioning checklist into the DocuWare world. And by storing that provisioning checklist, I sent that checklist to somebody who needed to act upon it, right? What did we do? We simply passed what used to be a piece of paper in an electronic format to satisfy the needs of a completely distributed workforce. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Nicole. Um, as you can see here on the screen, we, you know, we have a lot of um, compliance and awards. Um, you know, Docker has been tested by third parties. We have a lot of uh, user software reviews on Captera, G2 Crowd, and Gartner. And I'll include those in the email tomorrow so you can read about real users' success stories. And actually, um, going to the next slide, in your handouts, there's a case study there. And this is a, um, we, we pulled out a testimonial from a community action agency of St. Louis. They're, they are a nonprofit. And, you know, during this year, you know, they had to process a lot of applications. And then once they had to shift to remote working, you know, it was seamless with DocuWare. They didn't have an inter interruption in servicing their customers. And of course, as you know, we've re stated on this webinar, they can pull up now any file whenever they need it from any location. So with that, um, we'll open it up for Q&A now. And you'll see on the screen here, you know, what you saw today was introductory, but we wanna continue the conversation. And we wanna help you, you know, with any processes that you have, DocuWare can help you streamline that and digitize it for your workers from any location. So if you wanna see more, you can head to DocuWare.com slash demo, or you can email us anytime with any thoughts or questions, maybe not 
this week or next, you know, it could be next week, contact at us at DACA.com. Or if you're already working with an authorized DACA partner, definitely reach out to them to get started. So with that, um, we'll jump into the questions now. The first one is, can you um, pull up, can you use DocuWare to view documents and tasks on a mobile phone? It's your functionality that you saw um, in the demonstration that I did can be done from a smartphone or tablet from anywhere in the world. And to show you this, I'm actually going to mirror my smartphone. So just bear with me as the mirroring turns on. Okay, and you'll notice on the right-hand side, I actually have a DocuWare environment open. So a couple of things. The first thing is, let's go and look at DocuWare, right, in a mobile world, and it mimics perfectly, mirrors perfectly what you see from right to left. So I have my trays, I have my searches, I have my lists, I have my tasks. If we look at the smartphone, I have my trays, I have my searches, I have my list, I have my tasks. Now this is a live environment, so let me just look at one of my tasks Here's a sales exception. This is a request from one of my employees as part of a workflow to approve a sales exception. And I'm not going to approve it right now because I really want to take a look at it, but you'll notice there are my choices. My workflow choices are simply approve, co-approve, or reject, right? Other mobile capabilities is the ability to onboard documents into DocuWare, right? And to show you that, I'm showing you our scanning application and you'll notice how quickly DocuWare can simply scan a document, we crop it automatically, and now if I wanna send it into DocuWare, I simply choose Upload, and I choose, because I have multiple DocuWare systems, I just choose which DocuWare system I wanna send it to and which inbox. So I'm gonna send it to the inbox that's currently showing on the screen, and you'll see very, very quickly, as soon as the import is done on the right-hand side, that document is already waiting in the inbox that I scanned it into. So I apologize, I meant to cover that during the uh, the, uh, the webinar itself, but I appreciate the, the question. All right, yeah, thank you. Thanks for that, uh, that awesome demo there. So let's see, next question is, uh, regarding the drop, the drag and drop to the scanner or the email, do these just go into a master folder somewhere, still having to be put into a particular folder structure, or can it be directed on scan to go to a specific location in the system? Sure, I separate different scanners depending on the functionality of the scanner. So you can, let's say you're you're logging into a scanner with a like a key fob. We can, we can have individuals scanning to different areas within DocuWare, but a less sophisticated scanner is basically going to scan into a folder that DocuWare will be monitoring. And then based on that, that will drag it into, in most cases, if it's a shared environment, it'll be a central tray or basket where somebody will be tasked with then deciding who it needs to go to. Got it. All right, next question uh, comes from the same person. If you scan a document, how do the search terms get attached to the document? You said Docker applies to search terms. I think she might be talking about intelligent indexing. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of different ways we can do it and we didn't have enough time to really go into the indexing piece today, but we have uh, a, a technology called intelligent indexing, which is essentially leveraging artificial intelligence, which will learn your documents. Right, so it takes usually two or three passes where DocuWare will learn your documents and then intelligently place those indexes where they're where they're needed. Then there's other ways for structured documents. We could set up uh, we can set up templates against those documents. Uh, for instance, I demonstrated the DocuWare printer. You can actually apply templates in the printer, and instead of printing those documents to a tray, they can be they can be indexed and stored automatically without that 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 staging area step. Got it. All right, John, do you mind actually going to the last slide? Um, we have a few more questions. I know we're at the 30 minute mark now. So appreciate it if you, um, you know, we have a few more questions. So I will send out the recording. So let's see. Um, next question. Um, someone is asking about, they're asking to demonstrate it, but I'll ask it how it's written. Can you demonstrate an integration with AP import? slash scrape or non-HR contract routing. Can you or do you need to set archiving rules? No, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, what you're talking about 
I believe you're, you're referring to the ability to search for for documents from other line of business applications. Um, and what I would recommend is that you reach out because we'll happily show it to you, but we're kind of up against it from a, from a demonstration standpoint today. The way it works is DocuWare can embed search buttons into whatever screen that you're looking at, right? And when you hit that button, DocuWare will search for an index field on the screen and simply execute an index search automatically the way I showed you how to do one manually. So what that means to the end user is you can search for virtually any document from any application without logging out of that application. Got it. All right. Um, and then someone's asking, is a mobile app compatible for iOS, Android, and Windows? It sure is. And we have two more questions and we'll wrap it up. Um, is there a way to see all the files that have ever been scanned in? Sure, every document that's brought into DocuWare has an audit trail associated with it and we can get very specific. So uh, if you wanna see, see uh, at what stage that they were brought in, who worked on them, when they worked on them, whether or not they changed them and so on, it's a very robust audit trail that's included with the DocuWare uh, platform. Right. All right, so um, let's see. Is there an online playground where we can hands-on demo the solution? Yeah, feel free to go to DocuWare.com and sign up for, for a, a free trial, right? We also have a, a wonderful library of DocuWare um, videos in YouTube. If you go to YouTube and, and uh, just look for DocuWare, we have a library of videos. I would, I would recommend the library um, way at uh, the, the library route just because the the free trial as effective as it is is not yet configured so it it you might not not re really recognize where to start where the videos can show you based on your use case yeah if you want more information definitely reach out to us or if you're already working with a docker partner reach out to them and um Last question, someone's asking, you know, how does DocuWare stand out or compare to say Dropbox or Google Drive? Well, the, the real difference is, is DocuWare is a fully integrated vetted document management system, not just an archive, right? So, so the ability to archive documents is where any document management system starts, but to be true document management, you need to be able to um, uh, have a very robust security suite. You need to have a sign-in uh, platform that that can be tied to um, your. It can be tied to uh, your single sign-on capacity. It's the ability to configure workflows and keep those business processes moving. It's the ability to integrate to other platforms. It's the ability to set up e-forms, right? It's the ability to integrate with e-signature platforms. Right, so DocuWare is way behind an archive, right? We're talking about a, a platform that ke keeps your business processes moving. Yep, well, that was a great uh, summary to ending today's webinar. So it looks like um, that's all the questions we have. So again, look out for an email no later than tomorrow morning with the recording, the slides, and the assets. Again, reach out if you want to continue the conversation and see more in-depth features. You know, we're happy to help you or point you in the right direction with that. And if you don't mind, at the end of this webinar, our survey will pop up. We'd love to get your feedback. There's only three or four questions, so it's pretty short. And with that, yes, thank you again for joining us. Thanks, John, for doing that demo and, you know, answering your questions. So, all right, everyone, thanks again. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and the rest of the year. Have a safe um, and healthy holiday season, and we'll see you in January for our next webinar. Thank you.